Good evening and welcome to Our World, Our Power. Again, this week we have Mr. Glenn Greenwich, my host and Mayor of Southern Boulevard, and Mr. Stephen James, attorney at law, attorney at war. <laughs> and I'm so happy to have my whole team with me this week. It's wonderful. I have special guests today. Um, Two of them, and they know each other. Can you imagine? <laughs> small um, world, right? Small world. Our uh, world. Our world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small world. Well, <laughs> I have a young lady by the name of Isis. How do you see us? Jada. Jada. Mm -hmm. um, she's a writer and director of a, 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 a program that's going to be coming on called Mob Mentality. Yes, yes. And I have Michael, I mean, uh, Malcolm Boyd, who is a writer, actor, and an author. Yes. And you both. And a playwright. And a playwright. And a playwright. Play 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 long list. Yeah, yeah. Let's get them all in there. Oh, my goodness. I work for cars, <laughs> shovel snow. Welcome. Welcome to our world. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having me. Yes. I would like to find out some questions. Um, I'm going to be asking both of you some, some similar questions. Now, I know both of you come from different worlds other than showbiz. Please tell me, Isis, how you got involved in becoming a writer and a director of Mob Mentality. Sure. First, I'd like to thank you for having me on. Thank you all. Um, well, my story is a little strange. I actually um, went to law school and was supposed to become an attorney. Um, but after law school, I uh, right, right before I graduated law school, I was hit head on by a drunk driver and I was nearly killed. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah. We didn't know that. But by the grace of God, I survived. And grace when I was supposed God. to take the bar, I wasn't really ready because I didn't get to study. But I took it anyway and I didn't pass. And I said, all right, well, I have to go work and make money. So I went out to work. I left my law degree and I got myself a six-figure job in the private health care sector, nonprofit sector, and I was working as a director in that for a few years and I just realized that I really wanted to become a filmmaker and um, before that I was living with my sister in New Jersey when I was recovering from my accident and I was kind of down and out and feeling sorry for myself and I said, well, I have a lot of time on my hands. I might as well try to write the next great American mob show. And I sat in my sister's bedroom for three days, uh, recovering from my injuries. And three days later, I emerged from the room and I had mob mentality. Oh, wow. wow. That's whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. That's telling me that that's God-driven. Yes, Not that definitely. you want to be hit by a car. That's not the route no. you would have mapped no. out. <laughs> but it had a purpose. It yes. actually sat you down long enough to stay, you know, step away from the law game. Yep. Something I know a little bit about after 30 <laughs> years, right? And to sit down and reevaluate yeah. emotionally, you probably couldn't move around too much. No, so you had a not lot of too thinking. much. Yep. And that's where mob mentality was born? Yeah. That's, I and I stayed in my awesome. sister's room for three days, and when I came out, I had mob mentality. That was wow. the gestation period. Well, let me yeah. ask you this question. Sure. Before the accident, had you even considered writing... Yes, so, I had always written my whole life. Okay. Um, I, my writing helped me escape for th from things um, from my childhood that maybe weren't great. You know, whenever you're a child, you go through lots of things. And writing helped me escape to like these fantasy worlds. So I was always a writer from the time I was a child. I did very well in English and social studies, did not do well in math and science. But um, so I have a bachelor's of science in journalism. So was, my gift from God was writing. That was my gift, and um, I, I've always written, but it wasn't until I was hit by the drunk driver and I kind of didn't have much of a choice of what to do that I sat down and I, I endeavored to write Mob Mentality. Well, that's now, awesome. Now, 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 one question. Wh why... Uh, mobsters. Ah, yeah. everybody asks me that. You know, um, not to glorify violence, but, you know, when I was a teenager, I saw The Godfather, and I was amazed by the audacity of these criminals and how brazen they were, you know, you know, shootouts during the day and they were just doing whatever they wanted. And I was just kind of lured into their world because it was so different than my own. And I started loving mob shows and movies from that point on. So I watched Godfather 1, then Godfather 2, then Goodfellas, then Casino, then A Bronx Tale, um, Sopranos. And I just <laughs> said, wow, if I could ever write anything, even close to being as good as this, I'd be you know, in the right place. And I don't believe that my show is as great as these. I think it's a great show, but those are big shoes to feel. Uh, but those are the shows that inspired me and the movies that inspired me to write 
the next great mob show, something about the Italian mobster. They just had a certain swagger with it and they just did their violence a certain way where you were just kind of sitting there in awe, watching them beat people and do anything they wanted. And I just, um, I love mob movies and mob shows. So what difference your um, your story mm -hmm. with the stories that you've read and, and, and watched uh, and enjoyed? What makes mob mentality different? Yes. I'll tell you, so mob mentality is different because it's a mob show, but it's a mob show you've never seen. It's a mob show about a mobster who is a psychologist by day and a gangster by night. Oh, wow. oh and my goodness. Those that two worlds. That really has a twist. Yes. That has a mob that's, mentality. Yes. That's, that's, that's why I called it mob mentality. So by day, he counsels and, and tries to help these troubled <laughs> teens at an alternative high school on Staten Island. <laughs> and these kids are the worst of the worst. You have one who's pregnant, one who's suicidal, one who's beating people up, and he's there trying to counsel them. But when he leaves, he's beating people and he killing them. Counseling. He <laughs> needs his own counseling. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what makes mob mentality different. You've never seen a mob show with a gangster who's a mobster at night and a psychologist by day. No, no, oh, that's absolutely. awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Now, Malcolm, Malcolm Boyd, oh my goodness, Hello. play writer, actor, author. Anything else? <laughs> um, everything else. Everything I don't know. else. Um, Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into show business and why. Um, well, basically, I'm the type of person, I'm, uh, I'm like a horse with blinders on. Once I get my focus on something, I'm all in. Um, I'm a retired welder mechanic, believe it or not. That's what I've wow. done for 30 plus years. And um, when I was a young man, I worked at a bicycle shop, and I met the owner of the bicycle shop, an old Jewish guy. He used to, I was a little 17, 16-year-old. And he used to tell me, you know the difference between my people and your people is? My people work from the neck up, and your people work from the neck down. Mm. And he didn't say it as an wow. insult. Right, right. He told me to enlighten me to something, and I've never forgotten that. So Even though he was absolutely incorrect, but, because but, everything that everybody on this planet knows but, but, came from us, no, from the neck up. But I understand where he was coming from. I wish he would have just came from it instead of yeah. making an analogy. It was yeah. absolutely okay. insulting okay. and off base. Yeah, okay. But he, he's not here yeah. to defend himself or to take my No, opinion. no, no. no <laughs> but, but like a, Okay, well, but what I'm saying is, that yeah. was, that's something I've always carried with me. Mm -hmm. um, as I got a little older, I said, you know what? Even though I am doing what, what I do, a welder, fitter, you know, you, it's mathematics involved in it, and you build things with your hands. Mm -hmm. I always was like, you know what? Enough with this, with these hands, and let me start using this. Mm -hmm. So about six years ago, I just said, you know what? I'm going to reinvent myself. Wow. So I said, the first thing I'm going to have to do is find something I like to do. Just like ISIS here, I've been writing my whole life. I never considered myself an author. I just like to write. I used to write my son's children's stories, bedtime stories, because I never liked the stuff, you know, Snow White <laughs> and Three Little Pigs and all that garbage. Yeah, yeah. You know, for a little black kid in America, that's not fitting in my opinion. Right, right, right. Um, so I used to write his bedtime stories. My ex-wife at the time, uh, my son's mother, said, you know what? You need to try to get these published. I never believed in it enough to try it until I decided to reinvent myself. So I walked away from welding, I picked up the pen, and I wrote my first book, and got it published. Wow. Um, and what was, what's the name of the first book? book? First book is One Way In, No Way Out. Wow. And it's similar. And it's available? It's, oh, it's available on Amazon, uh, Kindle, and also uh, my website, is, which is uh, uh, 3-LegElephant.com. Oh, congratulations. That's, That's wonderful. T-H-R-E-E -E dash L-E-G-G-E-D elephant E-L-E P-H-A-N-T dot C-O-M. I always have to spell it out oh. because people always mess it up. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's the first book. That's how it all, all started. I was in San Francisco at the time. I came to New York a couple years ago to take part in the Brooklyn Book Festival. And that's where I met Glenn, and I met Pauline, and I started working with them with uh, um, um, Our World Media Magazine, also Joey. And Glenn, which is the next mayor well, of New Joe. York, I'm, I'm the first one to put that out there, <laughs> has, has more or less kind of been a, a, a mentor or opening arms, like, welcome to New York, here, do this, don't do that, try this, don't try that. And... Um, New York is an interesting 
place. Plan, plan it, because it's a planet all in itself. <laughs> yes. But it has been really, really, really good to me. Oh, I've achieved so much wonderful. since I came here. I've got my SAG. I'm a member Congratulations. of Congratulations. Um, and and, and tell, tell us right. about some of the uh, shows that you've appeared in. Um, I've been all over the TV. Uh, I've done a lot of background and things of this nature, but what I'm most proud of is I recently had the starring role, co-starring role in a, a, a short film called Drake, and it's premiering at the... A, a gazillion festivals. Yeah, a gazillion festivals. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I was the assistant director of that. Yes, yes. Oh, beautiful. Oh, That's one of your credits. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you see, I told you, you all know each other very, very well. Yeah. It's a beautifully small world well, in that regard. Yeah, yeah yes. but it, I'm, I'm, having, I'm really enjoying this journey, and I also got lucky. ISIS cast me. And uh, mob mentality. That's right. Which I, I haven't, you know, uh, they haven't brought me out of the uh, back room yet. Okay. <laughs> but I'm the secret weapon. All right. <laughs> Well, once, once, once they introduce me to the cast. Malcolm plays Carl Davenport. He's Priscilla's father. I play Priscilla. So oh, he's a retired detective, and he's her dad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. And, and Malcolm, I know that you also own a publishing company. Mm -hmm. Oh, Three-Legged Elephant Publishing. I basically took the model of some of uh, the young rappers and artists such as Prince. Um, instead of having the go-between, because my original publisher was excellent on every, in, on every aspect except for the mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that, um, mathematics. Well, well, it was 60% my way, 40% his way. Okay. But at the end of the day, it wound up being like, 80% his way, mm -hmm. and the rest was left up to me to run around with a butterfly in it <laughs> and try to catch it. So, long story short, I got out of the contract, I got my publishing rights back, came to New York, and I went to the state, and I started my own publishing company, got an LLC, Three Leg Elephant Publishing. That's wonderful. And this way, I'm in control of everything. If Beautiful. it doesn't work out, I can't blame a finger on anybody, but at the same time, nobody else's hand is in my pocket. Right. right. And that's where they really get you. That's, right, you that, that is. It's a lot of work, but it's a labor of love. That's right. You know? there's, something, there's something about owning your own material yes. and not allowing other people to profit off of it, um, and you get the, the scrap. So um, that's something to be said about all uh, of us who are looking to pursue any kind of endeavors, any kind of business endeavors, um, you want to own it. You know, we, we talked, uh, I think, a couple of shows ago about the ownership in the, in the music industry and, and what has happened to some of the people who've, who've uh, pushed back and taken control of their own uh, material. It's Many of them are not with us anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, like so, so it's important. Like it is Michael Jackson, like Prince. Yeah. Exactly. So it's important that 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 we own our own and can direct what we like to direct, um, rather than have somebody else. Um, pushing the button, so yeah. very important concept. Um, and for the same with me, I own Mob Mentality, and I'm very lucky, too, because we have gotten a few offers, and I just knew when to walk away. And the benefit of having a law degree and knowing how to read contracts oh and knowing sense. clauses and understanding that you could be signing away your life um, is very, has been very helpful to me. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to underline that, that conversation. You, you, if, if you don't have the talent yourself, obviously ISIS did, you need to get professional yes. help. Do not walk into uh, any business deal without the proper <laughs> right. level of, of professional people around you that are in support of you, not that they've recommended. Yes. Because a lot of a lot of times they say, "Oh, well, here's a lawyer." You <laughs> right. know, um, you know, he'll, give he'll, you a lawyer, they'll give you the accountant, <laughs> and they'll give you the bookkeeper. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, exactly. And you're just happily <laughs> saying, "Oh." Okay, what, what a nice record label. <laughs> right. How wonderful. Out. They yeah. give you everything. Yeah, they give you everything. Yeah. What I discovered in my journey was the majority of the people out here in business will, will do as much as you let them get away with. Yes. yes. So if you walk in there prepared, they'll treat you, you know, like, okay, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that. But the minute they see that you're weak in something or you're not aware or alert, that's where the things come out. Yes. Oh, he doesn't understand this part of the contract, and I'm not going to explain it to him. Right. right. And, uh, and they take advantage of you, and in the long run, somebody will make you aware of it, or you might find out yourself, but by then, thousands, yeah. if not millions of dollars have passed through your hands, and you don't yes. even realize it. Right. And they, they sit there like, you know, oh, I, 
Well, see what had happened was, right. you know, one of those stories. And you wind, either wind up in court or you wind up with your pockets empty and they drive off with a, you know, to, to, to retirement with a, a mansion and a limousine and, and it's all your money. Yeah. They're living off of your money, your work, your labor. That's the part that kills me. They yeah. haven't put together two words to make a sentence. <laughs> But they're living off of your but time. Every, yes. They're living every minute of it. Yeah. Sure. Very now, dangerous. This this world uh, that we're in is called show business. Yes. yes it and is. it's a show, but most important, it's a business. Yes. Are you scared? <laughs> I'll start with you, Isis. Are you scared? Um, even though I do have a law degree, and, and luckily I do have um, knowledge that aids me, um, it is scary. But I tell people all the time that um, this is the business of filmmaking. So you have to understand, for me, as a, somebody making a TV show, when I say that, I mean that this is a business at the end of the day. So it's great that I'm a creative and I can write a show, but I better also understand all this contractual stuff. And if I don't, I better hire an attorney who I trust, who's working on my behalf and in my best interest to navigate these waters for me, because you can very easily as was said earlier, be taken fully advantage of. and um, Legally speaking. Legally speaking, mm -hmm. taken fully advantage of. And it's kind of, you know, people have attempted to do it to me already. Also being a female in filmmaking is not easy. And a black female yeah. is something else to be, you know, that people will try to see how far they can what? go with you. In America? Somebody <laughs> take care take of you? But, it's impossible. But luckily, <laughs> luckily for me, I just... Um, have uh, prepared myself for a lot of this, but I am scared though, it is scary. It well, is would you scary. say, Isis, that your background as a law student, yes. a law graduate, yes. a bar exam taker, and you know you studied for it and everything, yes. so you went as far as the licensing exam, has helped you in business in general, and specifically in the, as Lady Pauline calls it, the show business? Yes, um, and I'll tell you how it has helped me just in that way. Um, in the show, in show business, in fil filmmaking, making a TV show, there's a lot of legal documents that my actors have to sign. For example, um, before I can, you know, use footage from a casting call, everyone had to sign a release. Yeah. And you know, if I can't afford to have an entertainment lawyer drafting all my documents all the time, or any lawyer just drafting those documents, I need to know how to draft them myself, w myself with the language in it that protects mob mentality and protects my production company, Locked and Loaded Films. So yes, I would say that that knowledge from going to law school, Southern University Law Center, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, HBCU, oh. got to oh. shout it out. In the hizzy. Um, Southern made me, and, and it, it taught me everything I know, and it has helped me and equipped me to be able to run Locked and Loaded Films professionally and in a manner where we're always protecting the production company and the production mob well, mentality. Well, off air, you were telling us how um, and I called it the gestation period, but how you were laying in your sister's bed for a number of days and out pops this brand new bouncing baby called Mob Mentality. And I don't know what went on. I don't know what went on, but I know she was laid up for a few days and then that's original, she brother. came out. Yeah, well, that's when I get down. And she got, she got some immaculate conception going down and Mom Ment Mentality was born. But that yeah. can see, am I right? It was, yeah. I was just in Tell my sister's. Yeah, I, I had um, three months before I graduated from law school, I was hit head on by a drunk driver. I went to stay with my sister in New Jersey thereafter. I was supposed to be studying from the bar. Wasn't able to study that much because I was still in a lot of pain. And I was in her room just feeling bad for myself, you know, when you're feeling down and like the world is coming apart. And I said, well, I might as well write, you know. And I, I stayed in her room for three days like a maniac. And they would all say like, what are you doing in there? And then three days later, I came out and I said, hey guys, read this. And they were just like, oh my goodness, you wrote this script? And I'm like, yeah, I wrote this. And that was in pain and probably under the uh, influences of pain medication. Oh, no, no, I don't take pain medication. <laughs> okay. I, I have to get through it on my own. Audience. Yeah. I know that, but they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I took it only for the first day or two, but I'm very leery of those things, so I really tried to stay away from that stuff. But I was in pain. I was not um, in the best time of my life. It was a dark time in my life. And mob mentality was the shining light, so. Wow, that's yeah. a story. Now, yeah. Malcolm, when, when and where do you get inspired? In the morning, in the afternoon, at night, <laughs> you know, uh, you, uh, do you lock yourself away? How, how does it work for um, you? I'm, I'm the type of person, I think uh, Isis could probably appreciate this if she's been writing her whole life like I have. I fall into my stories, so for lack of 
things going on in my life, I'll just make it happen there on a piece of paper. And once it starts, that's it. I'm, I'm gone. I could be in this room with you right now. If I'm really into my story, I'm physically here, but up here in my head, I'm in that story. And um, my inspiration, I, it doesn't take much. It doesn't, that square thing on the wall right there, I can write a whole story behind it. <laughs> What's, what it's doing up there, how it got like that, and it's listening to us. And So anyway, um, <laughs> see, my, my, but my mind works like that. I, I can take something and run with it. So your creative juices are always flowing, and you can, like you said, take a spot or a speck on the wall and turn that into a story or a rap or whatever you want to call it, but you can yeah, bring it, it to it, life yeah, uh, for it, the audience. It, it's weird. It's really wow. weird. I, I it's a gift. I have very rarely had writer's block. I've had situations going on in my life that nothing, you know, like, ah, I can't, I can't do this right now because I have all this garbage flying around. But give me space and time, I can drop up anything you want. Um, wow. I awesome. prefer, when I do write, I close the curtains, I cut off the television, cut off the radio, cover up the pictures on the wall. I prefer a blank room. Okay. So everything... I, I, I compose, comes out of my head. It's pure and unadulterated from outside it's, sources. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing, you know. But it's all, but a lot of it is experience driven. Right. You know, I take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Is that, is, is, there's a di- is there a dinosaur in the room or do I hear snow? I got my pit bull. <laughs> I put my pit bull with me just in case. The mob, the mob mentality got out of control. <laughs> but that's down, how, Rover, that's, down. That's how it works for me. That's yeah. how it works. Okay. I like to take this time to say you're listening to Our World, Our Power on Caribbean Buzz TV and Radio, and you can always reach us at 607-301-0962 again. And our mayor of Southern Boulevard, how can people reach you? Oh, they can reach me at the 718-291-2110 and at the uh, website www.sutphin, S-U-T-P-H-I-N, B-L-V-D, BID.org. And our attorney at law and at war, Stephen James, how can people reach you? StephanGJames.com. All right, let's continue. Now I want to find out what advice, I always ask this question, would you give to somebody that wants to start in this field as a writer or an actor or wants to get into the field of show business? What is the one of the, one of the things that is the most important? Me? <laughs> um, just going for it. You know, I, um, I tell people all the time, uh, making money doesn't make you happy. I left us, I parted from a six figure job and my family and friends said, are you crazy? You're going to be sleeping in your car. Don't do this. We know you want to make this mob mentality thing, but honey, keep your job. And what they were saying made sense. It was rational and reasonable. But I said, you know, in life, if you don't take a risk, you'll never know. And we only live one time. So my advice to people would say is when you get out of your My advice would be, when you get out of your comfort zone, the most amazing things will happen. And when I parted from my day job, um, the most amazing things have happened for mob mentality. So it's really just going for it, taking a risk. Can I ask, how long have you been living with mob mentality? In other words, when did you emerge from your sister's room Sure. till now? Yeah, so I wrote it five years ago in 2013, right when I graduated. And it sat in a drawer for about four and a half years because I was, you know, in corporate America doing my thing. And my friend at the time, her husband, really beat me up. He said, I don't get you. He said, you're a really talented screenwriter and you have this great screenplay that you wrote and I'd like to help you bring it to life and you're not doing anything about it and what's wrong with you? And I went home that night and I thought to myself, what is wrong with me? And I read the script again and I fell in love with it all over again. Mm -hmm. And I started Locked and Loaded Films like two weeks later. And then after that, we just hit the ground running. Wow. Wow. (laughs) That's an amazing story. Thank you. Malcolm, now, what advice would you give? Um, I would say, number one, find out if this is what you really want to do. Because it is a labor of love. Um, It's a fantasy and a fallacy to think that I'm going to act today and tomorrow my name's going to be up in lights. Even when you do get breaks, they're not that particularly great. Some actors that we think are overnight successes, if we know their true story, um, they've been doing this for years and years and years and years and years. And if it is something that you love, it is something that you want to do, don't be bashful, don't be cheap, don't shortchange yourself. Go out and get the training, participate in everything. Be all in. 
be all in. There's certain things I won't do, you know, certain parts I won't take. That's, you know, because of my upbringing, whatnot. That okay. I don't feel it's appropriate to reflect a bad light on, on number one, my skin color, mm -hmm. and number two, you know, my morals. But other than that, I'll get So up. you mean if I ask you to take your shirt off and your pants and stuff like that, I, I <laughs> mean, that's not going to happen? <laughs> If Wait a minute, what, what's, what's the name of this show? Wait a minute, hold on now, wait a minute. But, uh, but yeah, things of that nature, there's certain things I won't do. Yeah. But, but I, I, see, I see like somebody taking the trash out the house. Uh -huh. But if a role comes up where they need somebody who can't sing, but it's a musical and they want me, I'll do it. Okay. And it takes... it. it for me, because I wasn't raised in performing arts, it took a lot for me to get up on stage in front of people and portray something, pretend like I'm this, pretend like I'm doing that, like uh, I'm that, because at the end of the day, that's all it is, is pretend like a child. But you have to invest in 100%, and there's a science to it. I didn't know there's a science to performing arts. It's beautiful to actually uh, embrace a character and become that character, and it really reflects in your performance. So that part, you know, I'm all in with. So, it, like I said, at the end of the day, if it's what you want to do, don't short change yourself. Dig into it with all your heart and everything. Just make it your whole world. Malcolm, now you told us off air that you were a member of the Screen Actors Guild, which is SAG. Yes. Are you also after equity? No, I'm not after yet. Okay. I'm not after yet. Okay. But uh, uh, that's, that's, that's coming because I prefer, I, I prefer the stage. Something weird about me. The bigger the crowd, the more relaxed I am. Okay. And I've discovered that a small crowd like this right here, if we were like if I was on stage, I'd be a little nervous. I really mm. I'd get butterflies. Okay. But if the room is packed, I'm like, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> but it's the, I the energy in the room. Right. I really drink in the energy. Okay. You know? So you eventually you want to become equity or after? Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay. I'm, matter of fact, I'm, I wrote a play called Six Ways to Sunday. We performed it at the uh, um, Secret Theater in Long Island City, and then again at uh, Hudson Gill Theater, but I was in the cast at uh, uh, Secret Theater, but not uh, Hudson Gill. Okay. But I'm doing something in May on the, the Lower East Side Festival at um, Theater for the New City called uh, Clothes Make the Man. Hmm. It's a play, a play about how people judge you by what you oh, have Oh, sure. Right. That'll be so good. So they want to see me do my thing. I'm also doing a... Um, a monologue slam just coming Saturday at uh, the Producers Club in Manhattan. So you're Saturday staying night. very, very busy, very active both in your stage production mm -hmm. as well as, of course, television now that you're with Mob Mentality. <laughs> like I said, I'm the type of person you put blinders on me, that's, that's it 24 hours a day with me. Beautiful. It's wonderful. Beautiful. I think that's wonderful. I, can I, I just, love, can yeah, I say yeah, something? Yeah. So he, Malcolm said all in about four times. So the pilot episode of Mob Mentality is called All In. Just so oh, you guys oh, know that. Yes. Oh, oh, wow. I just thought I would share that. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. 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 So oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I just thought I would mention that. Yeah. Uh, I'm very proud of you, Isis. Oh, thank what, you. The work that you're doing. Um, what are some of the pitfalls being a woman? Uh, in this industry, in this industry yes. um, a lot of people just, you know, really will um, see how far they can go with you. Um, there's been a few things that have happened to me that I believe that if I was a male director, like um, for instance, uh, you know, I've had someone, you know, kind of run off with money, you know, you, you give them a deposit for something and then the date changes and they agree it's okay with the new date and then all of a sudden when you come back and say, okay, we're ready, they say, no, sorry, you've lost that deposit and um, that and, and a few other things. We've had a few situations that have happened that I, you know, could tell, hmm, I don't know if I'd be treated this way if I was a guy. But what I do in those situations is rather than sulking and feeling sorry for myself, I just lay down the law. And I let people know, I, you know, I, I want to work with you guys. I'm excited to work with you, but you're going to have to follow a certain protocol and set of rules. And if you're not able to do that, unfortunately, myself and Locked and Loaded Films won't be able to work with you. Okay. Yeah. Now, Malcolm, I, I had a funny experience with you a few months ago. Hey, it wasn't me. <laughs> I was stepping through the channel, you know, and it was a Friday. And um, all of a sudden, I saw you. I was like, oh, my goodness, it's Malcolm. He's on Blue Bloods. <laughs> yeah, I've been on Blue Bloods. Oh, okay. I've been on Blue Bloods. And matter of fact, 
We did a um, all night shoot last night on Law and Order. Oh wow! Right. Hours on set. Thirteen yeah. hours. Yeah. Wow. yeah, that sounds like more than all night. That sounds yeah. like part of the day. Yeah, well, they um, um, they're wrapping this season. It's the twentieth season for Law and Order. A real season, yeah. as in year yeah. per season. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this they're the this, longest this, running. I believe. This is the last episode for this season, mm. and the rumor is that they might not come back next year. Really? But uh, that's the rumor. Wow. I can't confirm it one way or the other, but it's been going around all this season. Well, because we broadcast this program all over the planet, mm -hmm. um, some of the members of the audience may not know the premise of Law & Order, so can you tell us, not the whole show, the 20 years worth of the show, but just what you were shooting last night or what the premise was? Well, you know, Law & Order is a, a, a S SVU, Spe Special Victims Unit, which deals with sexual assault and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. And last night's episode was a guy who wife left him for another woman, and he couldn't take that, so he raped her. He raped the other woman? No, he raped his ex-wife. Okay. She yeah. left him for another woman, and right. it just blew his mind. So uh, he raped her, and we are having this big, long trial, and it got it pretty intense. It got pretty intense. Okay, so you can look forward to that episode yeah. airing around when? Um, probably in about four weeks. Oh, they wanted they wanted to. Um, it's gonna go Blue to Blue Bloods, Law and Order, New Amsterdam, um, the the new show FBI. They wanted the few that shoot and a few weeks out they air it. Right. Like okay. you know, there are other shows that they shoot them all. You know. Like, there's a new one called The Code. They the shot code. every episode of The Code, and then they premiered it. Yeah. I see. But that's when they do those shows. I'm on that, that, by the way. That might air yeah. for 16 episodes or eight episodes, and then come back in six months. We have your eight episodes, you have 16 episodes, mm -hmm. and if you're getting the numbers, the, 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 the uh, ratings. Yeah, the uh, 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 network will go ahead and bring you in for 23. Beautiful. That's the max. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what are you hoping for, Malcolm, in the next five years? Where do you see yourself? Um, standing on somebody's stage, accepting somebody's award for the leading role in Mob Mentality. Hey! <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, all right. Well That's very nice. Well <laughs> Isis, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, what do you want? I think that Mob Mentality is going to be wildly successful. It's going to get picked up by a streaming service or cable network. It is not a show for primetime TV. It's not for children to be watching. It's definitely going to be on cable or streaming. And I think I'm going to be an executive producer and uh, making sure Mob Mentality is going in the right direction, but working on my next show. Okay, when are you going to have your big opening well we are 50 percent of the way done with filming the pilot episode we plan to go back to finish filming um hopefully in the next six weeks we have um we do have a crowdfunding campaign that we're launching so in a few I, days what is that all about? yeah so we are looking to raise fifty thousand dollars to finish filming the pilot episode of mob mentality hear that? after we finish filming it Gotta we plan to moments. yeah we plan to go to the networks um and the cable networks and streaming services and try to make a deal for Mob Mentality. Um, our crowdfunding campaign will be up in a few days. But in the meantime, if people want to donate to us, they can go to mobmentalityparty.splashthat.com and click on buy tickets and hit the donate button. All right. Yeah. I and like that. when you have your rap party in about six or eight weeks, yes. don't forget... Of course. We we had a there. wonderful event two weeks ago. I wish I had known about you guys before. We had a pre-launch party for the crowdfunding campaign. The crowdfunding campaign is called Let's Make a Mob Show. So it's hashtag Let's Make a Mob Show. And we had an event in Brooklyn, and I wish I had known I would have had you guys there. But Joe was there, and he took our photos, and he did an amazing job. That's LL Cool Joe for you all from uh, <laughs> LL Cool Joe. Our power, bro Joe. <laughs> but again, if somebody wants to donate until our crowdfunding campaign launches, you can go to Mob Mentality Party dot splash that dot com click on buy tickets and hit the donate button and, and tell, let us know how much have you raised already yes absolutely so from our um, pre-launch party for the let's make a mob show crowdfunding campaign we raised five thousand dollars so oh, we are really in, in really one night in one night excellent yeah, so yeah, excellent. we are i'm um, actually no that was a totality of tickets t-shirts people bought tickets t-shirts um movie posters um so all of that we raised five thousand dollars yeah. That's awesome. Yes, That's awesome. towards our final goal. Yeah. You know, our listeners, um, again, when you think about what, what's taking place with crowdfunding and the uh, availability of getting 
access to finance. Crowdfunding is, is a very um, popular way to do that, and uh, especially if you've got a great, a great uh, um, product. A, a product. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Well, I'll tell you that we're doing it a little bit differently than the normal crowdfunding. So crowdfunding was a game changer because it's a way for people that are entrepreneurs to get funds to financing. But rather than going the normal route of using Kickstarter or Indiegogo, we actually decided to do something called self-hosted crowdfunding. Mm. And I'll tell you why we decided to do that. Well, tell us what it is. Yes, it absolutely. Self-hosted crowdfunding is essentially where you host a crowdfunding campaign through your own website. Meaning you don't use Indiegogo, you don't use Kickstarter, you bypass the middleman. Why? You're saving 6 to 8% right. in fees you would have paid them. But not only that, you're getting to preserve the analytics. All of the analytics belong to you now, so you know the age of the people, the location, where they're coming from. You get to an idea of the kind of people that are going to be interested in your program because these are the people that are backing you. So you preserve your analytics and you cut out a middleman. So our crowdfunding campaign was supposed to be out a week ago, but it's taken us a little bit longer because we're self-hosting it and we're making sure it's right so that when we launch it on our website, people will be able to go to letsmakeamobshow.com and back us. So self-hosting crowdfunding works. Um, I got the idea after researching a company that raised $100,000 in 30 days. They did it on their own. They have a formula and I can share it with you guys via email for free if you want your listeners to be able to oh, see yes, it for themselves. Definitely. And I just followed their formula and they said if you follow this formula, you will raise, a, you'll probably reach your goal. So that's what we're doing, self-hosted crowdfunding. Let me ask you, so how did you come up with the idea of doing the t-shirts, posters, and so forth to support? Sure, well, you always want to have some merchandising because it's another way to raise more money. So we said, okay, people love the show, they love the guys from the show, why don't we put out some movie posters. And I said, I want to make a t-shirt, but I want it to be a t-shirt that people aren't buying to say, oh, well, I'm supporting them, but where they can say, this is actually a really great t-shirt and I could wear this out. So I worked with my designer and he understood my concept and my idea. And he just brought me a wonderful t-shirt. And I just said, this is it. And the, the t-shirt sold like hotcakes at our event two weeks ago. We raised about $2,000 just in t-shirt sales that night. And I knew we were on to something. So the movie posters and the t-shirts and the uh, cast photos really help us to raise money for filming. And that money that we raise is to buy food for our cast, to rent equipment, to rent our locations. It's very expensive to film. So it really is helpful to us and we really appreciate everyone who's backed us and came to our event and bought something. We really appreciate the support. And it's helping us. The yeah, we film all over New York, mostly in Brooklyn. The show takes place on Staten Island, but we film mostly in Brooklyn. <laughs> uh, but we are always on location. Um, when we resume filming in about six to eight weeks, you will see us in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island. We'll be all over, and you'll see everybody in Mob Mentality t-shirts, so you'll know who we are. Well, I'm SAG. Hey. I'm AFTRA. All so right. if you need any extras, okay. I work very, very cheap. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. Absolutely. Uh, and Malcolm, when is your next show that you're going to be putting on for your play? Um, um, I'm working on a play now called Look at Me. And I'm looking to do that around July. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm taking part in the Lower East Side Festival in May, where I'm doing the uh, play, uh-oh. Um, um, uh <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know, go, looking at me, tell them what, what the basis well, of, well, you know. Well, look at me is I'm a big Edgar Allan Poe fan because his writing style was just, to me, just blows me away. <laughs> So I wrote something similar to what he writes. The guy is, guy is looking in the mirror at himself. He's talking to himself because he thinks he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and his reflection is no longer his face. It's his attitude. It's mm -hmm. extremely ugly. And it begins a conversation with him. And it just... It, it goes on and on and on. Oh, that's I, cool. I love that concept. That's a yeah. great concept. I do too. I do too. That's, that's different and it yeah. works. Yeah. Because we've yeah. all had people or ourselves at right. times when we look at that and we don't like what we saw. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, it, it, it came out quite well. It came out quite well. Well, let us know when that'll be on because yeah, we'll all be buying the, tickets. Let the, <laughs> let the audience know where and how they can well, put their that, eyeballs in front of them. Um, basically, if you follow me on Facebook, everything I do is Malcolm Boyd. Uh, I have a Facebook page, Malcolm Boyd Author, of Malcolm Boyd 
It's a regular Facebook page. And what, also, is the, what is the Malcolm Boyd regular Facebook page? Um, I just Malcolm just your Boyd, name? Just Malcolm Boyd. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I also gave my character in my book. My character's name is Man Walker. M A N N. -N from mm -hmm. the book One Way and No Way Out. Right. Um, I gave him his own Facebook page, oh. which was which was pretty interesting. When I first did it, I posted stuff from the book on my Facebook page through my character's eyes, and people following him actually thought this was happening. <laughs> Oh, it, yeah, it got kind of deep. Yeah, it got kind of deep. So it got to the point where I had to let people know what was going on. Right. And my sales shot up, but then it kind of fell off once people realized what it was. Right. You know, like, oh, this guy just. This, He's a good writer. He's a great writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a great writer was, behind it. Speak to us a little bit about, about Man Walker, because I, 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 think, I think that that's, uh, um, that's a gem, a hidden gem. It's similar to. It's similar. It, what's real unique about this whole situation is. What I write is similar to what ISIS writes. Mm. Well, as far as that story, I write a little bit of everything. I like love stories and all that. But anyway, um, this guy is a drug dealer. But he's like the guy next door. He just sells his wares. Like He sells his drugs like if he was shopping Tupperware. Or widgets. Or books. <laughs> yeah, widgets. Or widgets. Yeah. Widgets. Yeah. Law school, he's not we a gangster. about the widgets. <laughs> he's not a gangster. He's not a thug. He's none of the above. He just sells his stuff and pays his bills and cuts the grass and... He's a very quiet person. Anyway, all the people in his orbit are complete total screw-ups, as you can imagine, right. dealing with drugs. Right. He has a best friend who's a radio DJ who's just, he's a, a Howard Stern type dude, shock jock radio DJ. Okay. He's a complete screw-up. He gets himself in a jam. He runs back to my main character looking for help. My main character is too nice for his own good, so instead of saying, hey, you got yourself in that, get yourself out. <laughs> he tries to help him out and winds up with a target on his back oh. trying to help everybody else. Wow. Now he has to save everybody in his orbit. Only thing is he has no idea what to do next. Oh. And it goes crazy. I love that name, One Way In, One Way Out. Wow. <laughs> no way out. Oh, No, no way, way Out. out. Chinese <laughs> torture ring, right? You put your yeah. finger in it it's and can't get it out. One Way In, No but Way it, Out. But that's book one. Book two is Man in the Middle. And book three is uh, uh, Good Night, Bad Day. <laughs> Good I haven't night, released uh, book three yet because I'm having a debate about the book cover. <laughs> but other than that... And know, it's all Man Walker, different Man different Walker Adventures. Yeah, it's a trilogy. It's a trilogy. Mm. Yeah, you have to read all three books. So interesting. That's awesome. amazing. When you all get a ch chance to sleep. <laughs> sleep. I actually write at night. <laughs> sleep. You're scheduled to sleep some time down the line, right? <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up in the dictionary. I think I'm familiar with that. <laughs> I would like to, at this time, thank our guests, Malcolm Boyd and Isis Jada. Josh. And can I give you my social media, if oh, that's sure. okay? Um, I want to thank Where you guys. You? Uh, I want to thank you guys for having me on. You can follow Mob Mentality and everything we're doing. We're on Instagram and Facebook at Mob Mentality the series on Instagram and Facebook. Our production website is lockedandloadedfilms.com, and you can watch the trailer for Mob Mentality by going to mobmentality.tv. Hello, and I. Malcolm. And you can follow me on Instagram at Malcolm Boyd5433. I'm also on Facebook. Just look for author Malcolm Boyd or straight up Malcolm Boyd. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're interested in my book, you can get my book on Amazon or you can also go to my website, which is the word, the, the word three dash laid elephant dot com. Beautiful. Thank you. This is Lady Pauline for Our World, Our Power. This is uh, Glenn Greenwich. Um, I just I I want to say that it's such a privilege and an honor to see folks who are out there doing show business, you know, but bringing our flavor to show business, um, and and that's you know for for those of you listening or thinking about it, please, please, please. Follow your dream. It's so important. Amen. The, yes. These two folks here are um, have been writing all their life and now have have monetized it. They have, they have taken that talent and they're now monetizing it in a way that's bringing their gift to the world and also putting a little change in their pocket. So I mean, you know, it's the best of both worlds. So uh, we encourage you to um, keep looking, keep thinking, keep growing. Uh, those thoughts and ideas because business is about money and uh, the best business is your own. 
Yes. Amen. <laughs> and I got to tell you, sister gave up a six-figure guaranteed income to follow her dream. So if there has ever been a living proof of what following your dream sometimes entails, you have to be willing to take a chance. As they once said, the future is not always to the swift, but to those who dare yes. to take a chance and follow your dream. So yes. uh, you're living proof of that. Malcolm, you. you're doing, absolutely, and you're doing your thing. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of different uh, burners going on the horizon. All of them sound very promising. I know that you've met with some successes, but the best success is yet to come. And I think with the collaboration of you guys with um, Mob Mentality, <laughs> we have some special treats coming along yes. down the road. Am I wrong? You are right. <laughs> right. That's right. my specialty. Yeah. I forgot yeah. to tell you guys something. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Tell us. Uh, so there is a chance to win a chance to be an executive producer on our show. And I can tell you how. And anybody can win this. If you go to letsmakeamobshow.com and enter your email address and name, that's letsmakeamobshow.com, enter your email address and name, you'll be entered for a chance to win an executive producer credit on our show and two tickets to our private screening. So guys, go to letsmakeamobshow.com. I'd love to see your name next to mine on IMDb. Beautiful. You know, I, I just can't let this conversation go. So, so uh, <laughs> what? You want us you to know, stay? <laughs> I, 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 well, I, I do, and uh, but there's there's so many um, so many uh, uh, gems here. So so I know Oprah had an idea, and one of the things that I was inspired is when I was in Chicago to actually see her studio, and of course we talked about it earlier about owning your own. Um, Material, yes. intellectual property, yes. your intellectual exactly. property, and, and she was able to now cut out the middleman. We've talked about that as with well. With the own network, having her own. Well, she's doing that now, but right. even with a studio, oh, okay. she had her own with Harpo Studios. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. She had okay. her own production right. um, space, and oh. and and she was able to launch two other um, shows: uh, Doctor Oz mm -hmm. and Rachel Ray, and, and Doctor Phil, and right? Doctor Phil mm -hmm. as well out of her studio. So oh, her wonderful. studio actually became the uh, focal point wow. of, of her business. And then, of course, now she's got a network. Right. Um, but that, that studio helped to fund, you know, fund her for, to be able to go out and buy her own network and wow. be able to do those, those kinds of things. What, what, um, so I wanted to ask a little bit about that. And I also wanted to find out who are you collaborating with? Okay. Now, and obviously, the two of you are working together, um, kind of met each other, but who who are you collaborating with, and then how would you actually spawn that off to people who are interested in the business to get in those kind of circles? Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll answer that question first. So I was recently, about two months ago, at a birthday party for a lovely guy um, who had given me some wonderful advice about mob mentality. And essentially his advice was when I told him that a few um, network people were kind of buzzing around and interested in the show, he told me, do not sell it. This is going to be something. He said, if I were you, I said, I'd hold on to it and wait. And I took his advice, and I was so happy I did. So I was invited to his birthday party, and at that party, I met a man by the name of Chris Phoenix, who owns Phoenix Media Group. And Chris and I were talking, and he asked me what I do, and I said, I'm a filmmaker. And we exchanged cards, and the next morning, he texted me. He said, hey, I'd love to watch the trailer that you told me about. So I said, sure, and I sent him the trailer, and he said, I'm going to wait till I get in my office, because you know us movie guys and TV guys, we like to watch it on the big screen. Oh. So I said, well, that's the only way to watch the trailer. And about 20 minutes later, he texted me. He said, call me right now on this number. And I'm like, like my heart is like coming out of my chest. I'm like, why does he want me to call him? So I called him. He said, Isis, this is your show? And I said, yeah, you know, we're working on it. He said, I am blown away. He said, I would never have imagined. So Chris is a big TV guy, TV production guy. He's worked with everyone from NBC, ABC, you know, all these really big wigs that I aspire to work with one day. And he was so moved by what he saw we did with the trailer for Mob Mentality that Phoenix Media Group um, decided to donate $10,000 worth of services to us. They did the color for our trailer, professionally done, and they did the sound mixing professionally for our trailer. So we were able to re- um, show the trailer to the world again during our pre-launch party, and they did an amazing job. So I want to thank 
Chris Phoenix from uh, Phoenix Media Group, he really believes in us and he would not accept payment. He said, I'm doing this because I believe in your show and I know this show's gonna make it. And I just wanna say that you have to put yourself in circles with people that fan your flames in the words of Rumi, you know. Positive circles and positive people are so important in this business and if you want to make it, you have to be around people that believe in you and will push you, that are not yes men, but that will push you to your greatness and make you work hard to become greater. And Chris really has done that, and I'm so thankful to him. Um, so again, it's just being in those right circles with people that believe in you. And you'll know, it's a feeling, you know when it's the right person. That was very well said, because that you. applies to any field. Yes. That is great advice. Yeah. Thank you Thank again you. for sharing that. Yeah, so Malcolm, I'm, I'm, taking, I'm about taking notes with that. One. <laughs> yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, she's dropping jewels on you today. Both of you are. Yeah, yeah. And Malcolm. You're, you're, I'm learning so much from Malcolm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, Malcolm's concepts and yeah, things are just so amazing cool. as well. Yeah. You know, a lot of what I do, because like I said before, I'm like a horse with blinders on. So sometimes that works against me as well, because as far as reaching out and collaborating with other people. A lot of times I'll miss that because I'm so focused. So uh, to kind of touch on what Isa said, it's really important to surround yourself with people that, 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 that will push you, but also understand the type of person you are right. that can work with you because everybody can't work together just the way it is. <laughs> right. you know, I found that out a few <laughs> years back. I, like I said, I'm a retired mechanic. I started an auto repair service back in Denver, Colorado, where I'm originally from. Mm -hmm. Did pretty good, had nice clientele, but I hired nothing but friends and family. <laughs> Long story short, that was a complete, total nightmare train <laughs> wreck, you name it. Wow. So I'm taking my time, and I'm being selective with who I work with. Putting together the right team. Right. Putting together the right team, exactly. People right. that can see they have the same vision, vision I have. You know, and not somebody, number one, trying to rip me off, right. or number two, trying to come and be the big shot, right. you know. I'm running this and this time we're coming <laughs> right. in. Or coming and trying to loaf because they're family or whatever. Right. Right. They've got to work right. so hard because to show up when they can. At the end yeah. of the day, you, that creative energy <laughs> goes down the toilet. Yes. Number one, and yes. you spend so much time fighting and bickering, <laughs> you know, in fighting, you, you don't get anything accomplished. Yeah. Right. You know, so, so I've true. met a few people. Right now, we're still at the infancy as far as the collaboration thing goes. Yes. But, uh, you to hear from me. You to hear from me real soon. So, so, well, what, just, so if I may just piggyback on what you said about, you know, just past, not successes, but we all know, the successful people around this table, oh, all yes. five of us are, that the road to success is paved with failure. Oh, Many yes. Failures. Many failures. Right. <laughs> That's, That's how you know problem. you're on the right track. Right. <laughs> I failed so many times I would cry and I'd get back right. up. Learn. Yeah. Right. You, know, I, you I, learn. Uh, my sister, Brenda Jones, has been a very large stabilizing factor in this whole journey of mine. Okay. You know, she pretty much, we've come to the agreement that I do this, she does that. Right. And we don't get in each other's way, step on each other's toes, so forth and so on. And I'm starting to reach out beyond that, you know, with other people I can trust or believe in. Right. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, Praise God. Right now I'm working with a young man named Kwame Smalls. Was on, um, he was on the television show, the reality show, um, I Love New York. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> people around New York yeah. are familiar with yeah. it. Yeah. He has his own production crew, and I'm writing for a, a show that he's doing. Called, I'll go ahead and put it out there, called Captain Saber Thought. <laughs> but it's a complete total... Can you total repeat that, please, sir? That went over my head. Captain Saber Thought. What is that about? Thought, you know, I like one way in, no way out, but I think I'm going to like this one even more. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm, I'm the writer and director on that. Wow. So it's hilarious. I mean, it's just... Sometimes I, I, I can't believe I'm... <laughs> so that's a little variation on Captain Saber Joe? <laughs> Um, yes, it is. Yes. yes, it is. yes, it is. yes. Save a Joe? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that about you, Joseph. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Leave Joe alone. He's a good man. Hello. Uh, in the house. Uh, but yeah, it's, like I said, it's real important to surround yourself with the right type of yes. people. Not just because there's people, since I've been here, I call them New York actors. Yes. <laughs> They'll tell you what you want to hear, when you want to hear it, and how you want to hear it. Right. And when it comes time to fulfilling that promise, just like this room got quiet, that's <laughs> another story. There's right. nothing. Yes. There's nothing. Yeah. And do me a favor. Don't lie to me because I'm not that important in your life. Lie to the judge. <laughs> <laughs> lie 
The end of the story is this, right. so okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just a waste of time to get it in your behalf and my behalf. Right. Right. Oh, boy. And number two, now, <laughs> I'm not mad at you, but right. I'll never deal with you Gotta again. You, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Uh, can you tell me one positive thing that you have gotten from your journey so far, Malcolm? Um, I've learned that 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 no matter how bleak it gets or bad it gets, if you believe in yourself, you can pull through. Okay, Isis. Yeah. What would you say? Um, I would agree with Malcolm. Um, I've had some pretty dark days, and I tell people, if you knew my st my story, you would understand this glory because I've had some dark days. And it's believing in yourself and getting back up after you fail countless times and saying, you know what, I can still do this, I got this, this show is special, you need to get it out there. And, and it really comes down to being your biggest cheerleader. Because um, my mom, she may she rest in peace, she was my biggest cheerleader. And when she passed away, that cheering section was gone. And it really affects you because you're like that person, you know, your mom loves you no matter what. That's my baby. That's my baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what, no matter if you do good or bad, yeah. you know, a mother's love is just unconditional. So when my mom passed, not only did I just miss her because I missed the love and how much I loved her, but you didn't have that cheering section anymore. You have to become your cheering section. Yeah. And I don't and I don't mean to be boastful or to have to, to not have humility. I don't mean to be full of yourself. You can be confident and be humble at the same, same time. That's how my mom raised me. I'm very confident, but when I'm on set, people are always trying to say, you know, oh, ISIS is here. I, I'm, I tell people I'm just like everybody else. I don't need you to treat me differently because I'm the director. I keep my head down. I do my work. That's how this happened. I'm not better than anyone. I don't want special treatment. The only thing I want from you is to do the work. So um, believing in yourself, and getting through those dark days and knowing you can make it is a very huge part of this, like Malcolm said, because you will have a lot of days where you doubt yourself, but you got to get back up. You know, I'm, I'm uh, doing this uh, uh, Course in Miracles. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but one of the things that I'm reminded and, and you kind of ignited is that, that we're all children of God. Yes. And we have God in us. Yes. And so God is omnipotent. And so are we. And so I think that there's something about us being present to who we are um, and, that we, and that there's nothing that can stop us. And, it, and we will get bumps in the road yes. that will push us to the side or, or get us off track. But I think that when we come from that we are uh, ch children of God, God-like, God-inspired, that that... that Focus can keep us on track and keep us going beyond beyond where we even think imaginable. Yes, I agree. You know, and that's where believing in yourself comes in. Okay, um, God puts us out here just like you have a seed and you have fertile ground. Mm -hmm. And now it's like He says, "Like, now what are you gonna do with it?" Exactly. Yeah, you can let it go to waste or you can build it. I got your back. I got your back. I know I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. Right. But I'm also supposed to do this. I'm not just going to sit there. Well, God says it's going to be like this, so it's going to happen. No. No, right. no, 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 no. He's right. given me the opportunity. He wants me to stand up and use my brain and use my muscles and use my imagination and bring beauty to the world. Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, the Course of Miracles talks about, it, it, it talks about us um, having, coming from littleness, and what's available is the magnitude of the world that we're not even sure that we understand or know. We, we don't even have a glimpse of it because we're in such a small um, looking. Right. And, and so the opportunity is to keep, you know, as you all are doing, to keep breaking yourselves out of what of your comfort zone. You, I, I heard you both talk about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so it, it's, uh, so I'm clear that that's, that's what, what you're pointing to and what yes. you're expanding into. We gotta have element. these good people Absolutely. back. Yes. Oh, I'd love to that? come we back. We gotta have you guys back yes, I'd after love to the come next back. Uh, 
mountain or yeah, so you're all molehill because <laughs> there are no mountains too high. That's so right. After the next level of, of, of success, Thank come you. on back and talk to us. And remember, guys, go to let's make a mob show.com. Again, that's let's make a mob show.com for a chance to win executive producer credit. We are on Instagram and Facebook at Mob Mentality the Series, and you can go to mobmentality.tv to watch our trailer. Amen. Or you can pick up my books at the letter, the word three dash legedelephant.com or come see me next Saturday at the Producers Club at 7.30 in Manhattan for a monologue. What's that so date? That's the 30th. Thank you. All right. 20th, 20th, I'm sorry. 20th. 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 <laughs> 20th. Skip the week. I'll be there. I'll okay. be there. Okay, I appreciate it. This is Lady Pauline for Our World, Our Power on Caribbean Buzz, and you can also hear us on um, Spotify, and what else? iTunes. iTunes. Oh, wow. That's right. Facebook. Facebook. Facebook YouTube. Facebook, of course. Yeah. Wow. All over the world. That's oh. wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so Thank you for having us. Yeah, and this is your attorney person. at war, the Better attorney person. at law, Stephan G. James, and you can find me at 646-905-9000 or on the web, stephangjames.com. Amen. See you soon. Amen. All right. Glenn Greenwich. Suffern Boulevard, bid 718-291-2110. Love y'all. Peace and blessings. We out. Thank you. Bye. Have a great Thank week. Thank you. <laughs>